Hello friends. Now, in this lecture, we are going to study our next topic that is generation of impulse voltage. I have divided this particular topic in two parts. In first part, we will be discussing the standard impulse wave shape. So there are two waveforms which I am going to consider for the explanation for understanding purpose. And in second part, I'll be discussing on the Marx circuit, which is used to generate the impulse voltage. Now, you can see this waveform where it is drawn in between the percentage voltage and the time. This is in microseconds. As voltage is in percentage, the time is considered in microseconds. This wave shape is called as impulse wave shape or impulse wave. There is a simple difference in generation of high frequency, high voltage and impulse voltage in this high frequency the rise in voltage takes large time so steady increase in the voltage slow increase in the voltage is called as high frequency high voltage and sudden increase in the voltage is called as impulse voltage so transient over voltage due to lightning or switching because when the lightning takes place or whenever we do the switching the potential during this discharge increases to have very high value but the time required to reach to that voltage is very small and that cause a steep buildup of voltage if the lightning or switching is there then that is on the transmission line and other electrical apparatus so it means that line and the apparatus must have a withstand capacity to that particular voltage experimental investigation shows that these waves have a rise time of 0.5 to 10 microsecond. So this much time it takes to increase its voltage and reach to its peak value. And decay time, that is reduction time or discharge time is 50% of the peak value. That is of the order of 30 to 200 microsecond. So time period, this is represented generally as T2 and this time period is generally represented as T1 that is rise time and tail time or decay time. The wave shape are arbitrary but mostly unidirectional. It is shown that the lightning over voltage wave can be presented as double exponential waves. That defines the equation that is V is equal to V0 in bracket e to the power or exponential to the power alpha t minus exponential to the power minus beta t, where alpha and beta be the constants of microsecond values. So the above equation represents a unidirectional wave which usually has a rapid rise to the peak value and slowly falls to zero value. The general wave shape is shown in figure. The impulse wave are specified by defining their rise of front time, fall or tail time to 50% peak value and the value of the peak voltage. Thus, 1.2 by 50 microsecond. 1.2 to 50 microsecond. Where this 1.2 indicates the rise time that is T1 and 50% drop of the voltage in 50 microsecond 
that is decay time or discharge time like capacitor charges and capacitor discharges similar way here the voltage rises in 1.2 microsecond and 50% of that voltage reaches in 50 microsecond the peak value of the voltage is 1000 kilowatt if we consider kilovolt if we consider this kind so when impulse wave shapes are recorded the initial portion of the wave may not be clearly defined or sometimes may be missing moreover due to the disturbances it may contain superimposed oscillations in the rising portion hence the front and tail time about uh, have to be redefined now if i just consider again the magnitude of voltage the magnitude of voltage on y axis and the time t in microsecond on x axis and if i want to define the wave shape for 1.2 microsecond to 50 microsecond then i get this kind of waveform this is your 1.2 microsecond to 50 microsecond the voltage is starting from zero reaches to say magnitude 1 the microsecond say 25 50 75 up to 100 on this case so referring to this wave shape the peak value is reached so i just consider the previous one so peak value a is fixed and referred to as 100% value the points corresponding to 10% and 90% so 10% and its 90% of the peak values are located at in the front portion point c and d so this is point c and d the line joining these are points is extended to cut the time axis at o1 that cuts the point at o1 so o1 is taken as the virtual origin o1 as taken as the virtual origin so you can see here that the virtual origin is shown here so 1.25 times the interval between times t1 and t2 corresponding to point c and d so that defines as the front time that is 1.25 the point e is located on the wave tail corresponding to 50% corresponding to 50% so you can see the voltage of 50% is reached so this particular point that is point e and its projection on time axis is t4 so o1 t4 is defined as the fall or tail time in case the point c is not clear or missing from the wave shape record the point corresponding to 30% peak value f is taken and its projection t1 dash is located on the time axis so this point gives me the t1 dash the wave front time is that case will be defined as 1.67 so the tolerances that can be allowed in front and tail times are respectively plus minus 13% or plus minus 20% as per indian standards specifications 1.2 to 50 microsecond wave to be the standard lightning impulse the tolerance allowed in the peak value is plus minus 3% so this is what the general idea about the wave shape hope you understood the concept related to this standard impulse wave shape we'll see next part to generation impulse voltage in next lecture thank you so much